Howdy folks, today we're going to take this old knife that I dug out of the barn, hasn't been sharpened in a hundred years, just kind of been laying around, and you can see the way it slides on my thumbnail, that it's pretty dull. I've got two of them I'm going to do because I'm going to do a couple of different processes, but neither one of them are very sharp. So what I have here is what's called a diamond stone. and Using a diamond stone, instead of oil, I'll use water on it. But if you're using water or oil, the purpose is to float away any debris that comes off the blade. The most critical part of this is, one, maintaining your angles. After that, it's a matter of taking smooth, even strokes. And the way you do that is you start at the tip and you go all the way the length of the knife. Now you'll note I don't have very much of an angle on here at all. And as you do that, you start at the tip and you push into the stone and the length of the blade. You do the same amount of strokes on either side. You keep them fairly light. Uh, you don't need to really bear down on the stone. Now because this knife is so dull, I'm using a medium grit. If I had a coarse grit, I would probably use it. I could rough it in with something very much like this. This is a medium grinding wheel for a small bench grinder. And I can take, and again, using light angle, light strokes and I can rough in the edge and you'll see I'm, I'm maintaining that angle it's roughly a, a 12 degree angle it's that that's a guess I've been doing this a lot of years so it's just you get a feel for it after a while and a little bit of practice and you'll have a feel for it too but you can rough it in that way and then you bring it to your stone and it's really important that you maintain that angle. You don't want to rock it up and down when you're going across the stone. And there, and there. And after you've taken a few strokes, you look at your edge and you say, am I taking it off the edge? Is that a wear mark? Is it up, up high? Or can I barely see any? That'll tell you whether or not you have too much of an angle or not enough. And you just two, three, and one, two, three. And you'll see that that angle hasn't changed from here, even though the, the, blade, the, the tip of the blade is curled by maintaining the angle to the stone this way, that's the angle that we're talking about. That's the one that has to stay the same. So this knife is going to take a little bit of work because it is so dull. It has been abused and left in the barn and it's got a little rust on it. But I, I grabbed a knife like this to show you specifically that you don't have to start off with a knife that will already peel an, peel an onion or slice a tomato. This one definitely would not do this that at this point. And you just make the same number of strokes on each side. And don't get tired of what you're doing because it doesn't seem to be bringing up an edge right away. You may have to work it down a ways to get it to where you have the proper angle. 
and you've got to get that steel off of there. As soon as I finish with this stone, I'll start feeling an edge on there. And okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit of an edge right now. So we'll take a few more on. Okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit of an edge on there. It's, it's got a ways to go yet, but we will. Maintaining the angle, always concerned with that. And I'm not hitting this real hard. Uh, firmly, but not hard. And the water's getting really thin on there, so I'll put a little more on there. And the water is primarily just to float the debris, the steel shavings away. And if you're using an Arkansas stone, then you'd probably be using a very light machine oil. It also floats the uh, stone debris away because this will wear on your stone. And if you see anybody that has a really old sharpening stone, you'll probably see it started to wear a little bit hollow. Now this being a diamond stone isn't going to do that because the surface is very, very hard. And we'll just keep this up for a little while. And if your stone is mounted on the bench, then you can let go of this and you can use two hands as a guide. But my stone is just sitting on a rag, so I'm having to Hold it steady while I go. Okay, I'm going to keep this up for about another five minutes or so, so when I come back, I'll show you what I've got. Okay, we've been at this for, oh, about five minutes since I turned the camera off, and... Maybe if I can get this zoomed in a little bit, we can, uh, you can see the shiny part on the blade. And it's the same from tip, from the tip all the way down to the haft. And it's about the same. It's just that little bright shiny area. Maybe if I dry it off, you'll be able to see it better. You can see where I've just been working right on the edge. And remember how that knife would slide just real easy? Well now, unless I really try to move it, it wants to dig into my nail. That means this knife is starting to get sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this medium grit stone away and I'm going to bring a fine grit stone in and I'm going to put a little water on it and then we're going to do exactly the same thing as we were doing before. And again, like I say, the water is just to haul away the debris and make it easy clean up and it won't clog the stone. Okay, and I'm gonna do this for, oh, another three minutes or so, and then we can have a look at, see if that edge has come up any keener at all. I know it will, but I'll let you see that. Okay, I've, I've been working at this for five or six minutes, and now when I take and do the thumbnail test, you see it doesn't, it doesn't want to slip slide at all. Here's the other knife that I showed you earlier, 
You see, it, it slip slides real easy. As I tell, it's, you're starting to get an edge on there. Now, if you take and run your thumb up one side and then up the other, you'll feel on one side, you'll feel a slight burr. And on, in this case, the burr is on this side. The way you get rid of a burr is with a steel or a ceramic. Now, this is a kitchen steel. Chefs have them all over the place, and this is the one you see them in the movies with. But you don't have to do it real fast. Just once down each side and then over to the other side. You do it half a dozen times and you'll actually feel that kind of cutting, trying to cut into the steel what it's doing, it removes that wire edge. And now just that quick, that wire edge that I had on there is gone. The knife is sharp and this knife is ready to go and if you if you zoom in here a little bit you can see the shiny edge it's not very much of an edge this edge should be roughly about a 20 degree angle give or take a couple of degrees depending on the, thin, the thinness and thickness of the blade but uh, and both sides you'll see are the same so I'm holding my angles the same on both sides this knife is sharp it'll cut anything from meat to vegetables to rope. Now I'm going to show you a slightly different technique and one that uh, if you're using a smaller blade it's it's a little easier to work with. Now this is the dull knife. The other technique is basically the same except instead of taking long strokes you start at the tip and you make small overlapping circles as you work your way down the blade. And you work all the way to the base of the blade. And then you flip the knife over and you start working small overlapping circles that side. And you see I'm maintaining my angle. It doesn't change all the way down the length of the blade. Uh, I like to start at the tip and it doesn't really matter if you start at the tip or the haft but sometimes they say don't take your knife to a grinding wheel. If it's an old knife and you don't mind some scars on it then you can do this very very quickly on a grinding wheel. As a professional I did it for uh, all the time but the trick is you start at the tip because if you start down here all the while you're drawing it you're pushing that heat right into the tip then it has nowhere to go and that's how you ruin the tip of a blade because it'll turn blue on you when it does that the only way to get rid of it is to one retemper that knife or to uh, go back into my circular motion here this is generally used on a smaller blade, this, this style. And you can do that that way, or you can turn it over and do it this way here. Now, do you have to be careful not to cut yourself? Sure you do. But it doesn't matter whether you're moving the stone and holding the blade still, or if you're moving the blade and holding the stone still. You want to keep the same amount of strokes on either side. You want to hold your angle steady. This is just another technique and sometimes if you're in the wild and all you have is a smooth rock to use, you might have to do it this way. That's the only reason I'm showing you. Uh, generally, you'll want to hold whatever's moving in your dominant hand, 
in my case it happens to be my right hand but for you southpaws out there hold the moving part whether it's the stone or the blade in your dominant hand hold the other one in your in your uh, less dominant hand and I've run up and down that a few times and I can already feel a difference it's nowhere near sharp yet it's going to take several minutes of more of the same but it won't be very long maybe another 10 minutes and I'll have that blade as sharp as this one I want to move on to something else now so uh, when I come back we'll be set up a little different okay you can see this is a diamond steel and it is really good for honing a knife and as you can see I'm using it about the same way as I do with a stone and I can feel when that is actually cutting in and I'm being very careful you, they say never bring it towards your skin but I've got this guard here that that's what I'm going to hit so I'm not going to cut myself and I can really feel that fighting in. but this is just a little collapsible folding folding steel that I can carry in my pocket when I'm in the field it works really really well this happens to be a diamond steel but they make them several different ways and basically the motion is the same uh, just that little bit has made a big difference in the sharpness of this edge and I'm going to show you one other thing now we're going to have to move the camera and change the angle so I'll get right back to you with that okay this is a razor strop I have it tied up on a plant hanger off of ceiling beam but uh, I've got I've got a hook in the bathroom that I use to do this it's a little too crowded to take you in there to show you but this is a two-sided razor strop and this side is a little rougher it's a slightly different material and this side is used for actually sharpening the blade this side is used for keening the blade and I decided I'd pull out one of my older razors this one here is an antique and when I used to shave I would uh, use it quite a bit one of the reasons that this strop is as wide as it is is because it's approximately the width of the blade now you start off by taking half a dozen strokes on the sharpening side and the key here is smooth even pressure and then you roll that sharp edge away from the strop and you pull it back down and you see the people in the movies do this most people want to take and then pick it up and lay it back down but you never pick it up you put it on there you roll the blade away until you're dragging it that way I take no chance of rounding that edge or rounding it too fast and cutting into my straw then you flip it over and you do exactly the same thing on the alternate side and I'm doing this very slowly so that you can see I roll it back and forth and that way I'm always I'm applying a fair bit of pressure to the strop so you can see how the strop is bending where I'm pushing into it and that blade is sharp when I used to shave I used to use this razor a lot or one of the other three or four that I've got uh, if you're using a strop to hone a blade the same holds true the only difference is when you do it here then you move over a little bit and you do it here 
and you can bring it right out to the edge. You flip it over and again you roll that edge over, over the top and with just a little bit of practice you can get to where you can really get to sailing with that. But that's how you use a razor strop and the proper way to hold the blade when you're when you're actually doing it. You hold the blade so that when you come down you flip it, you flip the sharp edge of the blade up over the top and go back down like this. Flip the top, sharp edge over like so. You never want to do this and then go back with it. That That's what instinctively you may want to do but the proper way to do it it'll save your edge, it'll save your blade is always roll that edge over the top. It's a very simple process. It only takes a few minutes. I've been shooting for about a half an hour, or I've been sharpening for about a half an hour. I've keened my razor and I put a good edge on two very old, very dull knives. And to show you that they are sharp, they are very sharp. And that's it for today.